What's going on guys? So what you're looking at right here is a proper studio monitor. This is a product that's designed for the people who make the music that we listen to. Which means this is something of a first here at Zero Fidelity because normally when I review gear, it's gear that's specifically designed for hi-fi playback. But I thought, you know what? Let's have a little bit of fun and take a product like this to see how it performs when it comes to just listening to music purely for fun. So guys, welcome to my admittedly unusual review of the PMC Result 6. Let's roll the intro. Alright guys, so welcome back and I admit I sometimes wish my channel had higher production value because this would be the perfect opportunity to give you all some sexy sliding shots and result sixes with this beautiful scripted voiceover going over what you'd get. But you know what? This is zero fidelity, which means we're just gonna wing it. Alright. So what you're getting is an active two-way monitor. Active meaning that the amplifiers are built into the speaker. Most professional audio speakers come like this and there are many advantages beyond convenience. Now I'll have to save that for another day, but focusing strictly on what you're getting here, we're gonna start with the top. Okay, so on top you're gonna have a one inch soft dome tweeter that's protected by this metal grill. And you're gonna notice this piece right here that looks a little bit unique. So they call this their defense like fins, like a shark. I'm not making that up. Okay, so basically what's going on here is this is to help with edge diffraction so you can get a wider sound field. Now it's important to note that this is slightly unusual when it comes to loudspeaker design, at least for professional use, because usually that's not really a big concern because whenever somebody's using these as a tool, it's just one person sitting in one spot. They don't really need a wide sound field. But as it just so happens, that's the direction that PMC wanted to go in. And I like it because sometimes you're gonna have multiple people in the studio and it's nice if everybody gets to hear more or less the same thing. Now, moving down, we have a six and a half inch doped paper woofer. I love this kind of material for reasons that I'll get into later. But uh, yeah, I understand why they went with this choice. And let me just say it pays dividends. Now, beneath this, you have the logo, and this is actually gonna be a vent. So this is a transmission line design. Now they're very proud of what they've done with this transmission line. I honestly am not too proud to say it's a little beyond my head, so what I'll do is I have a link in the description box down below that'll not only fill you in on all these little details about the speaker, but it also will explain what's going on with the transmission line and why it's so special. So, turning it to the side here, you're gonna notice these weird rubber strips going down the speaker, something that's unusual. Well, this is to help basically dampen it from any surface that it's gonna be on. And it's a really clever thing. And I asked them like, did you guys ever measure the difference? And they said, yeah, actually we took an accelerometer to it and it definitely has an impact. So that's pretty cool stuff. I think the only complaint I would have is that they're pretty spaced far apart. So you'd have to have some pretty wide stands in order to make this work. Now on the back, this is going to be a very simple speaker. In fact, I love the simplicity because there's no fancy DSP going on with this speaker, which is very commonplace in the studio world nowadays to auto-correct basically abnormalities within the frequency response range. PMC just said, you know what, we're just going to go straight up analog. So everything on the back is as basic as you can possibly get. We have gain adjustment, we have a balanced input. Yes, there's no single ended input, although you can use an adapter. PMC recommends that if you do go that route, use a good one, something from the likes of Nutrik. It's not super expensive, but you at least want to use a quality adapter if you want to go that route or have to go that route. We have our uh, IEC inlet for your power cable, and that's about it. The amplifier that they use inside of here is a modified class D amplifier. I believe it's an ice module with 100 watts going to the woofer and 65 watts going to the tweeter. But otherwise, guys, the only thing worth mentioning is that PMC is a company that not a lot of people know about, but they've been around for a long time. And the funny thing is, they've established themselves very well in the professional audio world. In fact, they're one of the few companies that has a Grammy for their contributions in professional audio. While they do have a high-end audio line, it never really took to the market like their professional audio products, which is their bread and butter. And one of the things I forgot to mention is the Result 6, even though it's not inexpensive at $3,000, a pair. This is their most affordable entry to date within their professional lineup. So with all that being said, now let's talk about how they sound. <music> 
All right, so to be straight up with you guys, these speakers were designed for near field or desktop use, and unsurprisingly, this is where they sound the best. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna break this review down into two distinct parts. The first part's gonna be dedicated to how they perform in their natural environment in a near field desktop setup, and then I'm gonna talk about how they perform in more of your traditional hi-fi setup to where you put them in your system and you sit about five or six feet or more back away from the physical location of the speakers. Because even though they have a character that remains steadfast no matter what you do, the experience that you take away from these speakers will vary depending on application. So on that note, let's get started. All right, so let's get started by going over the character of the Result 6. That way, if you're to take home these speakers, you'd more or less know what to expect. So number one, expect a very, very revealing presentation. I mean, these speakers are very transparent, even by studio monitor standards. So if you're somebody who wants to experience your recordings for what they really are, or know exactly what's going on with your components going upstream, these are gonna make for a very compelling option. Now it's also important to note that if you're coming from warm sounding speakers, stepping into something like a Result 6 could be a little bit of a culture shock for you just because these speakers are the opposite of warm. In fact, their general voicing resides on the cool side of neutral, when they present music, they're neither forward nor laid back. In fact, they're actually pretty neutral players when you get right down to it. But still, there is some voicing to the sound. It's not perfectly flat. And I would say that the voicing has a mild V curve to it, meaning that the treble is going to be boosted just a little bit. The upper mid range is going to be a little bit pulled back. The rest of the mid range is going to be pretty flat. And then the bass is going to be bumped up just a little bit. Now, these speakers weren't designed to be perfectly neutral. They were just designed to be very transparent and to have voicing that would make for great listening sessions over long periods of time, which is great for workflow use, it's great for your sanity, and as it just so happens, it makes for a good listening experience when you use them just for fun. Now, the big question is, if you were to use them in your desktop setup, what kind of experience can you get out of these speakers? Are they cold and analytical, like a typical studio monitor, or is there a little bit of musicality to them? And I would say it depends on what you're using with the speakers. Because they're so transparent, I feel like if you're using bright sounding components, then you're gonna get more of that bright analytical sound. If you're using more neutrally voiced components, then that's what you're gonna get, more or less a just a fax ma'am type of presentation. And if you're using something with a little bit of warmth to the sound, then you are going to get that little bit of warmth to the presentation with most of us associate as musicality. So overall, what I like so much about these speakers is, well, number one, their versatility. I love the fact that in my desktop setup, it didn't really matter what type of music I listened to, whether it's orchestral music, whether it's hip hop, whether it's jazz, rock, whatever, they treat everything with this great sense of equality. And I absolutely love that because don't get me wrong, the speakers that I was using on my desktop before this were the Harbeth P3 ESRs. And I feel like in that environment, they're also very versatile, but you can still tell when they start veering outside of their comfort zone. I didn't experience that with the Result 6. It was down to play pretty much anything. And there's also a number of other things about this speaker that just makes for a compelling listen once you get used to the sound. And it may take a couple days to adjust to it. So number two, let's go over the imaging. The imaging is absolutely fantastic. Uh, I'm still not convinced the defense are a perfect solution for edge defection, but it does do the job in widening the stereo image. And when your ears are pretty much as far away as you see right here from the speaker, there's really gonna be nobody who I think is gonna complain about the imaging. The driver integration, as you would expect from a studio monitor, is absolutely fantastic. You're, even when you're sitting this far away, or this close, I should say, you're not gonna be able to identify, oh, there's the tweeter, there's the woofer it should come together very well, very quickly. Now, overall, I would say there's a few unique surprises that were in store for me with the Result 6, starting with its ability to sound fantastic at low listening volumes. I don't find too many speakers, let alone studio monitors, that sound great at whisper volumes. You usually need to crank it up a little bit for everything to just come together and to sound full. These speakers sound great, even when they're barely playing back music, everything sounds full and balanced. Really and truly, the only other speakers I've found that's been able to do that in a near field environment are the Harbeth P3 ESRs. I'm not saying there aren't other speakers out there, this is just in my experience. So that really and truly impressed me. The noise floor of these speakers is very low, which is something I was concerned about because some active monitors, especially ones that use more typical class AB amplifiers, you'll be able to pick up on the buzzing if you're sensitive to it. And I'm proud to say, or I'm happy to say, that these speakers do not have that. 
Now, overall, I would say that the listening experience is interesting because it's this unique mix of transparency and musicality. On one hand, if you're listening to poor recordings, this isn't gonna throw a Band-Aid over those poor recordings. You're gonna know that you're listening to a poor recording. But for some reason, in the desktop environment, I found that it wasn't enough to make me not want to listen to the music. In fact, it wasn't enough to even distract me from saying, oh yeah, I need to close this and move on to something else. I just sat back and I enjoyed the music. And when the recording just so happened to be great, then awesome, it was a wonderful experience. So I think in the near field, this is one of those rare instances to where you get something that's very transparent, very balanced, very neutrally voiced, but at the same time, relatively neutrally voiced, but at the same time is fun and enjoyable to listen to. And I'll say this, the Result 6 is one of the very few speakers I've heard in my desktop setup to where I said, you know what, if I had to live with this from this point moving forward, if this was it, I'd be okay with that. And there's, there's less than three other speakers I can think of that I would say that about. So the Result 6 is in their home environment, in a near field environment, they're, they're fantastic. They're versatile. They do all the things you would expect from a studio monitor while still doing some of the things that you would enjoy from a hi-fi experience. And now that leads me to how they sound in more of a traditional hi-fi setup. Pretty fun. All right, this has been a positive review so far, but now we're starting to enter territory that's gonna be a lot more polarizing. And I say that because once you take the Result 6s out of their native desktop environment and put them into more of a hi-fi setup to where you have them on stands and you're sitting five or six feet away from the speakers, well, now you start to run into a sound that you're either gonna really love or not so much. And here's what's going on. First, let's talk about transparency because this is one of the speaker's greatest assets and when you're in a desktop environment, it just works and it works very well because not only do you get to experience the recordings for what they really are, but due to the voicing of this speaker, due to the driver materials and how it propagates sound in the near field, even when you're listening to poorly recorded material, it's not a brutal experience. It's not an unpleasant experience. You can listen to it and still enjoy the music all the while being aware of the fact that this isn't a great recording. But when you put them in the cliched hi-fi setup, this is when you get more of the, if it's a bad recording, you're just gonna get bad sound. If it's a mediocre recording, then you get average sound. And if it's a great recording, then you can get stellar sound. That's just what you're gonna run into with these speakers when used in a hi-fi setup. Next, let's move on to imaging. In a desktop environment, it's about all I can imagine anybody ever wanting. But in a hi-fi environment, well, let me put it like this. On one hand, these speakers can lay down a pretty wide image or uh, in pretty wide sound field, especially given the fact that they're studio monitors. There's gonna be great focus in between the speakers. And one of the talents I forgot to mention is their ability to unpack complex recordings and complex information in a way to where it's just very easy to hear all of the individual elements going on within a recording. But these speakers don't disappear like a lot of other hi-fi speakers will at this price point. Now for some people this isn't a big deal, but for others it's a deal killer. And then lastly, let's talk about bass. In the near field environment, the bass seems very well integrated. Yeah, it's bumped up just a little bit, but not in any real impactful way. And in fact, if you're not really used to more balanced sounding studio monitors, then you may feel like the bass is perfectly linear in the near field environment. But when you put it in a hi-fi setup, something odd happens. You hear that coloration a lot more distinctly, that bump at around 60 hertz or so and then because of the design of this speaker it just drops off to nowhere so it's this weird thing to where you have this bump that's very noticeable and then the sound just disappears now i at first blamed my setup for this but after doing a lot more listening i was like no i think this is just how the speaker behaves in this type of environment. Now, some people are gonna care about that, some people won't, but this is more or less what you're gonna be getting into if you use these speakers in a more traditional hi-fi setup. If the recording's great and all the gear that you're running to them is top-notch, the sound is gonna be fantastic. It's, there's almost this walk-through sense of transparency. The mid-range, of course, is gonna be beautiful, very quick and clean. The treble's gonna be bumped up a little bit, but overall, the presentation is going to be polarizing. It's either an experience that you really, really want or an experience that is just the opposite of what you want. And that leads me to some caveats. Okay, so at this point, I think I've covered most of the negatives. In fact, there's only two things I really need to go over that I didn't mention earlier in the review. Number one being dynamics. And that's not even a negative. These speakers, when it comes to handling dynamic passages without distortion, they're very, very good in that regard. 
Next, let's talk about power handling. In the near field environment, I think they have more than enough power to suit most people's taste. However, in a hi-fi setup, in a big room, and for somebody who likes to listen at loud volumes, these probably aren't gonna be the best options for you. In fact, if you're somebody who likes to listen at loud volumes, you like a lot of big visceral bass, and you want something that's warm and easy going sounding, then these are gonna be a very easy pass. Otherwise, I think there's a very competent speakers, and that leads me to my final thoughts. So, I didn't plan on saying this on camera, but after giving the situation a bit more thought, I decided to be as transparent with you all as possible. And here's what's going on. The PMC Result 6, out of all the products I've reviewed here at Zero Fidelity, has been hands down the most difficult product for me to review, and here's why. As many of you know, I work pretty hard to make sure that I come up with performance summaries that are both accurate and reliable. That way, if you're to bring home something like this and to put it into your own space, you'd have a realistic expectation as to how the product's gonna perform. But doing that with the Result 6 is very, very difficult because even though it has a distinct character that's actually pretty easy to describe, the general experience you're gonna have with this product is gonna hinge on a lot of variables, such as application. It's gonna depend on whether or not you're gonna use them in a desktop environment or more of a hi-fi environment. If you're using them in a desktop environment, then this is where I think you're gonna get the best well-rounded performance. In a hi-fi environment, it's gonna be much more of a take it or leave it situation. Then you have reference points. Have you experienced other studio monitors before in your own environment? Because if you haven't, then as I mentioned earlier in this review, well, there could be a gestation period and it may take a couple days for you to adapt to the sound of this type of speaker. And then lastly, it's gonna depend on your gear. And let me give you an example. If you have bright sounding components and you listen to mostly mediocre to poor sounding recordings, you're gonna take these home and then you're gonna come at me and say, Sean, what were you talking about, dude? These are bright and fatiguing and thin sounding. They don't sound good at all. But on the flip side, if you have really good components and you listen to mediocre to great sounding recordings, you're gonna come at me and saying, Sean, you totally just didn't do these speakers justice. They are amazing in that mid-range. Oh my God, the mid-range is so amazing. Why didn't you talk about that more? So here's where I've ultimately landed with the Result 6. I think PMC has done a great job of threading the needle because they're very transparent speakers, but on the other hand, there's just enough elements going on that actually makes for a fun and engaging listening experience. And let me end this on a personal note. When I got these speakers in for review, I thought that it was gonna be a quick process because I've actually had other studio monitors in here before from Focal, from Genelic, from Mackie, from Yamaha. And I thought this was gonna follow the common trajectory of, yeah, it's a clean and balanced sound, but you're either gonna love it or not. And what I ran into was something that was different. When I transitioned over from the Heed Harbeth combo that I was running on my desktop to the iFi DSD Pro and the PMC Result 6, I was thinking that, okay, this is gonna be a cleaner sound, but ultimately boring and dry, and I'll just quickly get the review done and move on. But after a few days, I realized, you know what? This is a very engaging combination. And I could be satisfied with this combination for the long haul. And that's something that I've said about very few products in the desktop environment. So ultimately, I think the PMC Result 6s, they're really good. Even when you use them for listening pleasure, at least in the desktop environment, it's something I can recommend to people who are definitely looking for a transparent listening experience, but also people who have a versatile taste or a diverse taste in music and they want something for the long haul. And yeah, $3,000, that ain't cheap. But if it makes you feel any better, this is designed and made in the UK. So maybe that'll make the sting feel a little less uh, potent. Anyways, guys, that's just going to be my take on the Result 6. As always, thanks for watching. And until next time, peace. All right, guys, so I thought it'd be cool to give you a little inside peek as to how I evaluated these speakers. And what you're looking at right now is more of a cliched hi-fi setup. In fact, what we're going to do is stand up and take a closer look. Starting with the PMC Result 6s, as you can see, they're powered on, and when they're on, you have this light blue illumination light. Moving on, we have the Parasound JC2BP preamplifier, an amazing preamp. We have my trusty AMR777 CD player. Then, wait, what, what's all this? It's a cable with a box on it? Oh my god, he bought into the snake oil, everybody. But wait, what's this? Is this just a cheap little power cord? Oh my God, he's not getting the performance that he should be getting, everybody. 
Have I offended enough of you? All right, so moving on, we have the computer setup. Nothing elegant. Right now it's currently being occupied by the Harbeth P3 ESRs. Definitely need to get some treatment done. I actually have the material in. I've just been too lazy to put it up. Anyways, that's about it, guys. So, as always, thanks for watching. And until next time, peace.